Wonder Woman ain't got nothing on Mary Vincent. This teenage girl was brutally attacked by a man who severed both of her arms and dropped her off a cliff. Yeah, he legit chopped her arms off and did a bunch of other terrible things. An average person would probably lay there and wait to pass out, but Mary was determined. It's a pretty wild story, so stick around. Mary Vincent was a 15-year-old girl who grew up in Las Vegas, Nevada. She lived there with her parents and six siblings, which is a pretty full house if you ask me. Her dad repaired slot machines for a living and her mom was a blackjack dealer. Her parents were committed to the whole Vegas thing, damn. Also, I think it's so wild that a slot machine repairman is literally a job. Like, I wonder what the job listing looks like for that. Requirements, must be good at dealing with drunk people, fixing levers, working overnight, and tolerating the smell of coins. So Mary was obsessed with dance and she was really good at it too. All of our instructors were convinced that she was gonna make it big time. So she toyed around with the idea of dancing professionally. She also loved art and had big aspirations of becoming a mom. Speaking of moms, Mary's wasn't doing so hot. Her parents just decided to get a divorce, so things were pretty rough at home. Her dad was also known for being strict and short-tempered, like he didn't even let her wear makeup. But Mary had just hit a super rebellious stage of her life, which was probably in response to all the drama at home. She was skipping school, talking back, and wearing makeup. I love how wearing makeup is seen as rebelling to Mary's parents. Like, just let her live her best life and get back to fixing the slots, okay? Well, one day, one of Mary's sisters came in and told Mary that their dad was about to come home. She said he had a migraine and was super pissed at Mary. We never find out why, but it must have been a big deal because it was at this point that Mary decided to run away to Northern California with her boyfriend. Mind you, she was 15 at the time. Honestly, Matt props her for committing to the bit. I feel like most kids say they're gonna run away, but they only get a few miles before heading back home. Like, I thought about it as a kid, but then what are you gonna eat? I guess I could pack a few Pop-Tarts, but that's not gonna last me forever. So at this point, Mary and her BF had fled to Cali and were apparently living out of a car. And this was before living on wheels was trendy. Well, I'm sure you're aware that most teen relationships don't last and Mary's was no exception. Her boyfriend was accused of taking advantage of some other high school girl, so she left him and ended up staying with her uncle near Santa Cruz. From there, she made the decision to travel to Los Angeles to live with her grandpa and pursue a career in dance. And since she was no longer with her jerk boyfriend who had a car, Mary had to find a way to get down to LA. So she did the safest thing a 15-year-old runaway girl could do, hitchhike which seems like an awful idea, and it still is in my opinion, but hitchhiking was kind of the thing back then. This was in September of 1978, so it was way before the era of Uber and Lyft. So Mary stood on the side of the freeway with two other hitchhikers. She was holding up a sign that said, heading south, and in swoops a balding middle-aged man in a blue van, which already sounds like a disaster waiting to happen. And how cliche of him to be driving a van. What's next, he offers her candy? Actually, he offered her ride, which is exactly what she needed. The dude's name was Lawrence Singleton, and he was 51 years old at the time. He told Mary he was originally headed to Reno, but was willing to turn around and take her to I-5, which is where she needed to go. But here's the odd part. The guy said he only had room for one person. I might buy that if he was driving a Prius or a Mini Cooper or something, but not a huge van with just him in it. Also, I feel like it's a major red flag that this guy told Mary he'd go completely against his itinerary to drop her off. Be a bit less obvious, Baldo. So the two other hitchhikers Mary was with told her to stay back with them and wait, but she said she felt okay with this man and decided to hop in his van. She has to be joking, right? What 15 year old girl would just get in a car with some rando? Mary, I guess. When she first got in the car, Mary felt pretty comfortable with Lawrence. He apparently told her he had a daughter her age, which eased things up a bit. But then the guy did something hella skeevy. After Mary sneezed, Lawrence grabbed the back of her head, pulled her closer to him and said, let's see if you're sick. Ew, I hate this man already. And what happened to just saying bless you when someone sneezes? At this point, Mary was getting skeptical and started to doubt Lawrence's intentions, but she really wanted to get to her destination, so she decided to stay in the car. They were also on the highway with no other cars or buildings around, so it's not like she had anywhere else to go. Well, not long after the creepy sneeze thing, Mary got so tired that she fell asleep. Okay, sis, first you get into a creepy man's van who just pulled some stalker man shit and now you're falling asleep in it? I wish we lived in a world where girls don't have to be hyper aware, but sadly, that's not the case. After her catnap, Mary woke up and realized they were heading the wrong direction. She was really peeved and somehow got her hands on a sharp stick from inside Lawrence's car. She held it up to him and threatened him to turn around and take her back. 
yo, this girl means business. But Lawrence kept making up excuses and said they would be back on the route soon. Then he told her, I'm just an honest man who made an honest mistake. I'm not going to hurt you. Yeah, and I used to tell my mom I didn't drink before I turned 21. People lie. Moments later, Lawrence pulled over to use the restroom, but instead of going to a gas station, he just stopped in the middle of nowhere to get out. Hey, if you gotta go, you gotta go. And honestly, a patch of grass is so much nicer than a gas station. Like, why are they always out of toilet paper and soap? Oh, and don't get me started on the gas stations that don't even have bathrooms. Like, what's the point? Anyway, Lawrence just jumped out of the car in the pitch black to take a leak, and Mary decided to get out too. But right when she got out of the sketchy blue van, she noticed her shoes were untied. Mary had the thought that she might need to make a run for it, so she did what any other person in the world would do and bent down to tie her shoes. But before she could even loop the bunny ears, she was hit in the back of the head by Lawrence. Then Lawrence dragged Mary to the back of the van, assaulted her, tied up her wrists and ankles, and kept driving. Lawrence told Mary not to scream or he'd execute her. OMG. This is awful. And what is it with Mary and all these sleazy men in her life? First, it's her dad who won't let her wear makeup, then it's her criminal cheating boyfriend, and now this piece of trash? But things get even worse from here. A few hours later, Lawrence pulled over again. He cut off the ties on her wrists and ankles, forced a cup of alcohol down her throat. He continued to abuse Mary until the drink hit her and she passed out. When Mary woke up, Lawrence told her to get out of the car and lay down on the edge of the road. The whole time, Mary was begging for Lawrence to set her free. Then he went to his van, grabbed a hatchet, stood over Mary and said, you wanna be free? I'll set you free. Okay, this is even more brutal than I expected. How did this guy have the guts to sever off a 15 year old girl's arm? That is so disgusting. And I'm so shocked that he didn't get grossed out by it all. Like one time my mom tried to get me to help her take the stitches out of my dog and I couldn't even do that. But Lawrence didn't stop there because after he hacked off Mary's left arm, he moved on to her right one. Of course he did. So Mary is definitely in shock. She's missing both arms and she's kicking and screaming like crazy. Not to mention the insane amount of pain she must have been in. Mary then made the decision to stay still to make Lawrence think she had cashed in her chips. And it must have worked because Lawrence thought she was done for and dragged her across the road. Once he got to the edge of the road, he threw her off a 30 foot cliff, followed her as she rolled down to the bottom and stuffed her in a concrete pipe. But before leaving Mary to suffer, Lawrence said, okay, now you're free. This man has some serious control issues. Also, he's one of the most disgusting humans to walk the face of the earth. Now that I think about it, the term human is actually too nice. Let's just call him scum and leave it at that. Mr. Scumbag leaves Mary in this concrete pipe just waiting to take her last breath. But if you couldn't already tell, this girl is a fighter, so she starts trying to find her way out. Mary was dumped without any clothes on, so there wasn't really anything she could use to stop the fluid from her arms. But then she got creative. Mary rubbed her arms in the dirt to try and at least slow down the fluid. Then she attempted to get out of the concrete pipe. And by the grace of buffalo cauliflower, Mary was able to crawl out of the pipe and climb up the cliff to look for help. She ended up walking three miles until she got to the main road. This whole time, she walked with her arms up in the air to slow down the flow of fluid coming from her wounds. She also said it was to prevent her muscles from falling out. How is any of this possible? Like, I'm baffled at the fact that she's still alive at this point. And she's hella smart for holding up her arms. I feel like I'd still be stuck at the bottom of this pipe trying to figure out what to do. When Mary got to the road, she immediately spotted a red convertible with two dudes in it and tried to get their attention, which shouldn't be hard. This girl's in a pretty dramatic looking state. But I guess it wasn't dramatic enough for these people because they legit didn't stop for her. Yo, this bothers me so much that these dudes saw a 15 year old girl walking down the street covered in fluid, screaming for help and didn't think to stop. Like, at least ask the girl if she's okay. Finally, a second car approached Mary and this time they stopped, as they should. It was a couple who was traveling on vacation and apparently they missed their exit, which caused them to drive past Mary. When they saw Mary, they pulled over, wrapped her in towels, helped her in their car and called the paramedics. Mary was rushed to the hospital and underwent surgery. Once she was stabilized, she talked to the police and gave them a super detailed description of Lawrence so they could track him down and hopefully prevent him from doing this to anyone else. From Mary's description, a sketch was made and one of Lawrence's neighbors recognized the guy from the sketch and called him into the police. Investigators went to Lawrence's house and searched it. 
they found Mary's cigarettes and scraps of her clothes which appeared to have been burnt. But by the time Lawrence was tracked down, it seemed like he had deep cleaned his van. When investigators interviewed Lawrence, he told them he picked up two other hitchhikers. He said they were the ones who took advantage of Mary and claimed she was a $10 a night woman. I swear this piece of scum is on my last nerve. How is he gonna say he picked up two other guys when he specifically told Mary and the two other hitchhikers she was with that he only had room for her in his big ass van? Five months after the initial incident, Mary faced Lawrence in court. She had to listen to her attacker make up lie after lie on the stand. And when it was her time to testify, she walked past Lawrence and he whispered, I'll finish the job if it takes the rest of my life. Okay, what did Mary ever do to this man to make him target her? Like, he didn't even know her before pulling up in his van that day and now he wants to execute her as his tormented life project? The jury found Lawrence guilty on six different charges, but at the time, the judge couldn't impose consecutive sentences. Because of this, Lawrence was only sentenced to 14 years and four months. What the actual fuck? At the sentencing, the judge said if he had the power, he would send Lawrence to jail for life. How does this make any sense at all? Like, I'm trying to wrap my brain around the fact that Lawrence is gonna serve a chintzy 14 years for chopping off a girl's arms and tormenting her. So even though the sentence was terrible, Mary ended up filing a civil suit against him to at least pay for some of the damage. She won the $2.56 million suit, but never got the money since he only had $200 to his name. Okay, just when I think this can't get any worse, it does. In efforts to prevent other abused women from going through the trauma of their attacker receiving such a short sentence, Mary worked with the legislation to help create the Singleton Bill, which states that anyone who performs a torture-related crime must serve for at least 25 years up to life, which should have been in place from the beginning. After the terrible court situation, Mary tried to recover from the event. She picked back up with school and continued to go through intense physical therapy and psychotherapy to cope with all of her physical and emotional trauma. But she experienced bouts of depression and continued to have a bunch of nightmares about the whole thing. But the nightmares were about to get even worse because after serving only eight years of his sentence, Lawrence was released on parole for good behavior. How? Did the prison guards know what this man did? Once word got out, literally everyone in California protested Lawrence coming to their town. It was so bad, or in my opinion, good, that officials had to move Lawrence and get him a bulletproof vest so no one could knock him out with a firearm. They got him a bulletproof vest? So they'll protect the guy who mangled a 15 year old girl, but they won't protect her by keeping him in jail? Interesting. Well, Lawrence ended up serving a year of parole on prison grounds because no town would have him. After his parole was up, he moved to Florida. In 1990, Lawrence was convicted two times for theft. He apparently stole a $10 disposable camera and a $3 hat. Wait, that's so embarrassing. He seriously got clocked for taking $13 worth of stuff. But Lawrence wasn't done with his big crimes either. In 1997, he attacked again. The police received a phone call from a painter who was working at a nearby house. He told the dispatcher that he saw a crazy man without any clothes on through the window of a house down the street. He told them the man appeared to be repeatedly striking down at a woman. Police arrived at the scene to find Lawrence covered in fluid and a lifeless woman who had been brutally mauled lying on his couch. It was the body of 30 year old mother of three, Roxanne Hayes. She had been hacked at multiple times with the blade until passing away. So back to court, Lawrence goes. And Mary is brought back to testify too. She agreed to appear in court because she would do anything it took to stop this man from going after her or attacking other women. This time, Lawrence was charged for the crime and sentenced to be executed. But before his execution date, Lawrence passed away from cancer in 2001. Mary was so torn about the whole thing. She was relieved he was finally gone, but was so pissed he wasn't sentenced for life in the first place because that would have saved Roxanne's life. Mary was unable to pursue a career in dance after losing both forearms, but she was able to live out her dreams of being a mom because she gave birth to two sons. During her recovery, Mary learned how to paint and draw with her prosthetic arms and now sells her art to the public. And most of her art showcases powerful female figures. Okay, this girl is my idol. Like she is such a badass. And it's so terrible that she had to go through such a traumatic event, but the way she handled it all is so admirable. Honestly though, I can't believe how much of a mess this whole sentencing thing was. Like that scumbag of a guy should have been sentenced to life when he tried to take Mary's, but of course he somehow got away with just eight years to go prey on another woman. And I'm glad he's gone, but it sucks that it took that long. Anyways, that's Mary's story. It's pretty damn inspiring and emotionally draining. So I think I'm gonna eat my feelings with this buffalo cauliflower and call it a day. 
Thanks for watching. <gasps>